Okay, let's do some decking. We have three attacks here, one pad, one base, and one kick. And if I play this, you're gonna hear a small idea that I have, and maybe I will work on it further, but for this video, this is going to do it. So, okay, we have a huge pad and we have a kick and uh, I leave the base the way it is for this video, but we are going to do some decking on the pad. For this, I'm going to rip the MIDI data from this kick and for this I need to delete everything from the MIDI channel and uh, I can get it like this, like choose the kick, set this to in. And uh, yeah, this way we will receive the MIDI if I play the, the track. And now we have to send it to the instance where we want to do the decking. And here we have an instance prepared. So this is the last uh, instance of uh, Alpha Forever on the first track, on the pad track. So I select here the pad and the last instance, which is this. And... Uh, Proof that this works. Let's create the outputs here and let's play it. And we receive MIDI. That's awesome. So what we, what can we do here? Uh, first things first, let's create something that we'll drive a custom function and I'm going to call this seconds just like in one of the other videos. And I'm going to make use of the sample rate and the one over sample rate node. Like this. And here I'm going to create an input, which is going to be the trigger input. And this way we count seconds. It's this easy. So trigger comes in, seconds go out, custom function. And that's going to drive this. And let's plug in the inputs quickly. And take a listen at what, what you have like this. Okay, you could get the same with side chaining, so this is nothing special really, but but uh, the good thing is that we are independent from the kicks sound, so we can also do this. One of the ideas I have is that we can go totally independent uh, from this basic configuration and we can do, let's say, three different settings. And uh, whenever we receive a trigger, we will read out the velocity that we receive with the, with the MIDI, MIDI data, because on the kick track, I've set up different velocities for each of the uh, kick sounds. Actually, the the sound is is not uh, depending on it, so it's just uh, this. This doesn't make make a difference in the sound, but we can receive it here. And uh, so, whenever we have a trigger, we read the value into this variable. And we can take a look at it uh, using a signal value node to see what values we have got. And uh, yeah, I probably need something dummy to plug in my stuff so I can create a dummy node because um, this is a trick. Everything 
that is connected to the patch is computed like this. So if you create a designer where one of the inputs is not even connected to the output, it will be processed. So this way we can have a look uh, at the values without interrupting the signal. Okay, so let's create a switch and drag this into the first dot second dot dot number three, and the output is going to be controlling this guy. And uh, I can use a custom function here that's going to make my our lives easier. So if something comes in, it will come here, and we can go from one to two, three, and this is between zero and one always because of that's where uh, velocity is. I can delete this here and reorganize the patch so it doesn't look so messy, and uh, we can already set three steps here and snap the x coordinate and let's take a look at, at the values one thing i forgot is to connect the seconds everywhere and uh, actually i'm not snapping i'm just eyeballing this thing and I snap the Y. It's, that makes more sense. So yeah, we were able to to create a, to to crossfit between well, not to crossfit to switch between these uh, functions. So on each step, each drum kick, we can have a different uh, side chain effect. And uh, actually, we could go nuts. And uh, um, I have to check the kick if it has. It doesn't use the pitch either, so I can also play with the pitch of the kick. So let's put it, then put these kicks on different octaves, and yeah, I call this controller. Make it dark. I don't need this. It's just. So let's say that on different occasions we want to have different um, things happening. So maybe if the pitch is higher than, let's say, where are we? If the pitch is higher than 80, maybe. 
then we might also want to control something else. So then get another seconds note here. Give it a trigger and then maybe we want to filter here. So I create uh, I create a filter quickly. This here that and this is going to be the left input. That's yeah I'm going to go with uh, high pass filter now. One, two, I one, I two, O one, O two, and here comes the cutoff, and I think everything's set up except this guy here, and now we have a, a basic stereo filter set up. Just call this guy filter here. And this is the reason why I like to have a stereo trick here, because then I can root stuff into it and I can simply chain in stereo devices after that. So that's why I like to have it in the end as well. So if everything's off, then if this does not get a trigger, So I'm going to put a crossfader here and put this into the second slot. And this is going to be the driver for the cutoff. And I, I leave the first slot blank. And whenever the pitch goes above a certain value, which we checked before, it will be 80. Then we output one as we we will leave it the way it is and we will store this value until the next uh, trigger happens and that's going to drive our, our crossfader this is basically a switch but but with a bit of logics and uh, this should actually work Yeah, it's working, but this has to be, let's say, some high value. And the good thing is that uh, this way it's pretty easy to change the pattern. Like uh, we just have to go to the kick, hold it, and this way it's always going to be something different. And I can change the velocities as well. And now the whole um, thing will change. I think this is an interesting uh, method of doing ducking and it's maybe a bit more involved uh, in patching but it's rewarding and uh, there's a lot more to do with it so I hope you had fun bye bye